this height. Excuse me. Your excuse. Coke burp. <clears throat> I feel like the whole can came out at once. Um, <laughs> Hey y'all, uh, I wanted to introduce to you one of the very most special people in my life, somebody I've got so much gratitude for, my sweet sister Sarah. Hi everybody! Hey! Isn't she adorable? I love her. Hey, you gotta get what a gift that is, you know, to have one person in your family that actually is that way with you. And the other person was my mom, um, not her mom, uh, her mom is my stepmom. But these two people in my life and having them actually have faith and have trust in me and what I was doing, no matter what it was, no matter how weird it was, because let's face it, I've done some of the weirdest shit that has ever existed and still do. Um, but to have that, I can't tell you what a gift that is. That's, I mean, and it's, and you've always been that gift for me. Thank you. You're one of the few people in the family that never judged me for anything. Thank you. Thank you for that acknowledgement. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we like each other. We do, yay! Um. Then I remember you calling me, because my son was born with a cleft lip, and you, my phone rang one day, and it was my brother saying, don't get the surgery. And I was like, what? Like, he has to have the surgery. And he said, no, actually, I'm doing this healing stuff, and I think we could fix it. And um, that was like a huge leap for me at the time. Although I had total faith in your abilities. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. She had total faith in what she thought my abilities might be. Let's put it that it, way. It was just outside of the realm of like where my possibilities were. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing was that I would love to um, share with people is that even though I didn't, I went ahead with the surgery, my brother showed up with no judgment. And what that meant to me was... Um, he wasn't mad that I didn't, sh you, didn't you, weren't, you didn't come to the surgery and you didn't come see Stephen after it to judge me for having chosen past what you um, were offering. And I think that, that that's another um, key point because a lot of times when we, that, that's the hugest gift you've given me is just holding and then seeing him on the space for whatever choices I had, which were a lot of interesting ones. Um, <laughs> we'll tell that story at another time <laughs> when we have a longer vlog to make. <laughs> <laughs> but the amount of space for letting me be me and, and inviting me to something different. But if I didn't choose it or I went a different way, I never felt like put out by you. I never felt like um, that I couldn't play in your world or I wasn't invited anymore. And um, that's really been a huge gift. And it's kind of brought, it, brought me to where I am today with, with access. Um, so after that, uh, I was having, I don't know if you remember, we had lunch right after I had the baby. And I was sitting at a table and I was having a lot of pain because I had oh, an emergency C-section and it was a mess. And, and that was when I really was like, whoa, this is like, he, he's magic. Like something crazy just happened because you put your hand on my tummy and all of a sudden the pain got really intense. And I was like, fuck. Am I allowed to say that? Oh yeah. Okay. Say whatever the fuck you want. Okay. Ah. And I was this like, oh. is my blog. You can say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> um, and I like, I keeled over um, at the table and you just stayed real calm with me and and this was 16 years ago so like the your talents didn't arrive yesterday <laughs> um, but when that happened I I remember taking a breath right after and then there was no more pain there was no more, <laughs> nothing else and the doctors were expecting that I would still have like more follow-up and more need for medication and I didn't now, some would think that that would then make me go to access. <laughs> oh, I'm, no. No, I'm, no, the story continues. But I'm interesting <laughs> like that. <laughs> so, um, eight years later, we had Talia, and um, I was so aware the whole time I was pregnant. Every time I'd see you, the way that she would move um, was like, wow, like she's, she's so connected to him. Um, and... And I think that awareness like, was such a huge gift because what ended up happening was you, weren't, you were supposed to be in Hong Kong, um, and I think it might have been your first trip there. Mm -hmm. um, and we met at Christmas, she was due in February, and you told me, um, you put your hands on my belly again, this time there was a baby in there, 
And um, you talked to her, and you said, I, and you pulled back, and I was so bummed that you weren't going to be able to be there at the birth, but I could totally understand, you're changing the world, and what can you do, you know? And you pulled it back, and you looked at me, and you go, I'm changing my trip. Yeah, I remember like, that. I don't know if I have, like, she's demanding that I, I be there. And yeah, was, she's like, you be here. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm canceling this class. Like, and it was clear as day. I mean, You holding her, <sighs> what that was really like. Like, it felt like you were welcoming this, like, this being in, in such a way that, like, she knew, she knew that she didn't have to do all the other things the babies didn't have to do. And here comes my brother now. I'm, like, two kids in by now. Um, I got this. I'm doing parenting <laughs> differently. I got this. And my brother, who hasn't chosen to be a parent in his, this lifetime, comes over and is like, so... <laughs> Here's how this is gonna go. All the information he got from her, he's like downloading to me. And I was like, what? And it was such an awesome experience though, because what you told me was, don't, she doesn't require what the other babies require. And she's not gonna need to eat the way that the other babies need to eat. Now, any of you have had babies or been around hospitals or your moms, they are trying really hard to do it right. And they're trying really hard to do what the nurses are telling them, which is so like linear. And so when you tell a new mom that, like, the, let her tell you when she needs to eat, <laughs> I'm like, okay, like, I'm up for it. But all these people around me are judging us hard for it. Yeah. But she slept eight hours the first night. We were doing eight did to ten. You, did you hear that, mommies and daddies out there? <laughs> it was insane. I mean, at the point where I, I actually sat up and I was like, should we Google infant sleep patterns? Like, <laughs> to my husband, I was like, this is crazy. But it's because I literally let her tell me what was required. Um, and so, like, having a newborn at that point was just, like, ease. Everybody kept asking me, like, putting in my world, like, you're so tired, right? And I'm like, actually, no, she sleeps normal. Like, I'm good. Well, it's a, it, it's a big task to take on your brother's child for him. <laughs> See, here, what is she talking about? Well, we became aware very early on that this child was literally coming to my sister to in some way be around me, be with me, because she knew I wasn't having kids this lifetime, and literally this has been the case. And if you talk to Talia, like out of Sarah's four kids, she's the one who's always like, Uncle Dane, what's Uncle Dane doing? Where's Uncle Dane? How's Uncle Dane? And, and just... And it's magnetic, like when she yeah. sees you, it's like she, there's a part in her that like, is way like comes back, but not back alive. It was never dead, but it's like a, a different. It's like an awakening each time. The way that they, she just glows. Yeah. It's, it's adorable. It is. It is really adorable. She's so darn cute. Oh my god. Well, I had about the lie, <clears throat> which is now like dissipating tenfold. But um, that a mother of four couldn't choose access. So I'm using the tools of my kids, I'm using them um, in my life, I'm, I'm, but I would only allow myself like that much. And that was a lot more than a lot of other people with four kids would actually be able to create. Yeah. So I was like always doing the whole, well, um, like I should just be grateful. Like I should just, you know, this is enough. Like I've done a great job of what I've created. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm fine that. Um, as I sit here in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> On your second worldwide journey in a month and a half? I'm so uh -huh. traveled now. Um, <laughs> anyway, so what what had occurred was I, I had so much going on in my world and, and I'm in constant community with you, so you were contributing to me. And because I had bought that I couldn't like get to classes, um, uh, I was like, I, I gotta do something. and. You're like, you know, Sarah, I shoot a lot of these videos. He's like, you may get them in your email, but if you don't just have them handy, you could go on YouTube and watch them. And it's kind of crazy that someone would put so much of himself and his content and the stuff that people pay him for, like out on the internet for free to change people's lives for those who can't. And I was one of those people who thought they couldn't. And so what I chose to do was wake up every morning, 30 minutes before it was time to like officially wake up. And I would go out in my backyard and have my cup of coffee and I'd sit there with my laptop and I'd just watch video after video after video and just start to like go, okay, today's video, um, you know, what would it take to create this? Or who does this belong to? Whatever the video with the, the simplicity of the tools that you make it so easy on your YouTube channel for, I would then apply for that day. Mm. And 
then things started to expand and expand and expand. And, and I actually was able to create space by making that one little choice to carve out 30 minutes a day. Right. And um, it changed everything. Uh, I started to be like show up to more classes, um, but I was still like, almost like, okay, now I can choose the class, but now it has to be like super local. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> And so I was up and down California classes. Right, because I could never create enough to actually go somewhere like, oh, I don't know, Africa, as an example. <laughs> but I got to say, what she, she sent me this text and she said, sweet brother, I just want you to know what I've been doing. And she told me about, what, and what she said was, she's like, two years ago, or a year and a half ago, she said, I heard you say that if you'll do one thing a day to nurture you and actually do that, that you'll actually start to get more energy and that you'll start to think, you'll start to feel your batteries recharge. Just do one thing a day. And she's like, and I heard you for two years and totally ignored you. And then one day it just clicked. She's like, I feel like I've got more energy than I have had in years. And I feel like I'm getting me again. But to hear, to, <laughs> to have your sister who you've seen be this beautiful, amazing being struggling in so many ways because, you know, it's like having four kids and being the mom that you are to them that actually cares about them the way you do. And, you know, you and Steve were having, you know, difficulties. It was like, it wasn't easy financially. And so all of these struggles that she had, and it's like to, to get that something that I put out in the world was helping JJ. It's like, it's like that. All my Christmases came at once. <laughs> it's like our helicopter ride this yeah, morning. Yeah, exactly. We went on a helicopter ride this morning. This girl who used to only be able to go to a class if it was like next door um, <laughs> is in Africa and we went on a helicopter ride. So there, shit changes. <laughs>
<laughs> and knowing that there was just, I could just make one phone call and he would fix it. That was the demand piece. I'm, like, I'm not gonna let him fix it this time because I want the bigger life and I wanna be. But knowing that you have my back, and you've always had my back, but in that, in that experience, knowing that um, you were holding space in a way that was like, I'm not, he's like, you're not, literally, you're not gonna go hungry and there's always gonna be a roof over your head. You're gonna be fine. I've got you. Changed everything. And it was like in a matter of months, everything went whoosh. And it just, like I literally in a matter of like three months of using the tools, getting in the money book, ask, texting Gary, texting my brother, getting facilitation, moving the energy through of what was possible for my life, in a matter of three months, I like literally tripled my income. Like literally, I remember bringing home a check and going, looking at my husband <laughs> going, like, look, what I did. look at this. <laughs> it was amazing. And, and it was like, then when I gave you that news, I called you, well, you were con consistently checking in on me, but I called you one morning and I said, I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> I think we got this. And, oh, and that was when you said, okay, cool. Are you ready to be a facilitator? <laughs> <laughs> and it was so weird because I thought the invitation was always there, but it was almost like you knew exactly when to like put it into words, right? Like I could have chosen to facilitate being a facilitator years ago and you would have said, yeah, awesome, let's do this. But I wasn't ready. Yeah. I There's a reason, well, probably many, many reasons why I'm not a medical doctor, a surgeon or something like that. I hate seeing things cut hurt, open, bloody, oh my god, oh. And <laughs> biggest sister, like, you think you would know, I would know that? And then I was like, well, he's a doctor. He had to, like, learn about the body. Oh, exactly. Yes, I did. Duh. They were dead when I cut into them. For those of you who've never seen a C-section, whoo! Okay, sorry. Well, you were at, so. I mean, oh. <laughs> so we're in, <laughs> we're in the, the pre-op room, so and I've got these funny. two men sitting next to you, my husband and my brother. And I- And we're men. We're escorting, <laughs> we're being there, being men, we are men. Men, we are here for you, sister. We're good. We are, we're I, strong. I sent, I sent a special request to the anesthesiologist that you guys both be there. So he comes in and he's like, okay, like he's asking questions. And um, my brother says, it's because we don't, we both want to be in there because we don't actually know who the father is. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so his face is like, <laughs> like <laughs> the most awkward situation. And we're dying, hacking up. Um, but the thing that but that opened the door to was this anesthesiologist, like the peanut gallery. So my whole C-section, I'm strapped to a table. These three, these knuckleheads, are like, making jokes, whatever. So this guy plays a trick on him. Well, both of them. <laughs> he goes, okay, guys, okay, guys, like intensity. He goes, it's, it's going to be time to stand up. And so he, they, they stand up, like thinking, I have to like follow orders. I'm in an OR. But when they stand up, they, have to, they see over the curtain and they see all of my organs out. Like you wouldn't have said, you wouldn't have had that experience <laughs> if you weren't messing around with it. It well, yeah. goes around, comes around. Yeah. yeah. And so all of her organs are out on her stomach, and I'm like, and I was like, okay. And, but it gets better. So I didn't know you had that that, that um, reaction, and then that's when we decided to give him the gift of what well, he won't have in this lifetime, which is cutting the baby's cord. <laughs> what a gift. <laughs> We weren't making that significant or anything. Um, and then we told you we were naming her Shyla Dane. And um, so you cut the cord though, you did it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, and you didn't pass out. I step up when I need to. You do. Yeah. But the difference between my first C section and my second with your energy in the room was so different for me. Mm -hmm. Like the space that I had about knowing my organs were on my chest. Right. Because you can actually feel your organs on your chest. Like, like so weird. Like they take that them is, and put them on your chest. That is. And they're like, it's gonna feel like a wet dog on your chest. Weird. But, um. <laughs> I'm reliving it. Oh no. <laughs> My brother has always been what you see. Um, when I was a kid, one of my favorite like times growing up with him would be when he would come in and do some sort of like theatrical performance, whether he had a joke to tell or um, whether you were dressing up in crazy costumes for Halloween, like whatever it was, there was always this presence um, of wanting to make people laugh and wanting to have spread joy and wanting to um, like heal and heal spaces that were dark and heavy. And um, 
And we had some dark and heavy spaces growing up. We had up. some dark and yeah. heavy spaces growing up. And um, there was a lot of separation. And like even now when people will even try to do separation um, and tell me, oh, he's not your, your full brother. And I'm like, what? I know, like, seriously? Like, 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 <laughs> like it makes me go, uh, what? Like, yeah. because I don't get that that's actually true no matter what moms we came through. Yeah, exactly. We were able to, like, stay connected through all of the judgment of how we should have been separated. Right. And one of, the, one of the stories I tell a lot is that I didn't know you were not my, this reality's full brother uh -huh. until I was seven. And I will tell you why. <laughs> tell <laughs> because, me why. Okay. So <laughs> this really beautiful woman would always come pick you up, like, from our house and she was so wonderful and kind would bring me birthday presents and we my called, mom and we called like all the neighbors in, on the cul-de-sac like aunt and uncle you know so i thought like mom penny was like just another mom of mine and yours right. and you got to go with her and i didn't and i didn't really understand why but okay cool like i didn't get it because i, I we weren't doing separation due to it right and um um when you were 16 you went so you're nine years older. Just let you guys know. <laughs> you can't tell because he's getting younger, but um, I'm going to get on that too. Anyways, um, and so you, when you were 16, you went and lived with your mom for a summer. And my whole world just sank. And that's when they stopped me. And I didn't understand why. Like, why can't I go? Why are you going? Like, what's going to happen here if he's not here? Like, it spun me out. And I remember that was when they, like, the parents in the home sat me down and explained to me that you did like that we weren't and I know what they were trying to create but it was like you that you weren't my real brother you right. weren't my full brother whatever that word is that people try to throw out and I just knew that that wasn't true right. and I will never at seven, at seven <laughs> yeah. and I never forget sitting in the, the back of the truck that we came to pick you up like we drove to Idaho then to pick you up um and the like intensity that was in my world the closer we got to because mm -hmm. I like I couldn't breathe again until you were back and um, and that that to me is not two people who are separate that's two people who like are so connected no matter of age no matter <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> no matter how often they cry together yeah. <laughs> um, and is that how you get rid yeah. of tears by the way yeah this uh, is the uh, tear uh, motion remember uh, oh yeah I remember now <laughs> I have so much to learn <laughs> growing up watching you you were always trying to choose whatever it was that was going to whether it was create more for the family create more for the world create more for your friends like that um energy of who you be is always in there it's not that like like you gained like fame and money and now he's being this or he's putting on some show i love being in your classes and watching um watching you deliver these tools that can change people's lives but truly baby you it's not an act. Like you don't just put it on when like the lights come on or the people yeah. are sitting in front of you. Thank and you. Um, thank you. And I can't. I don't. I would have been a horrendous actor, you know, <laughs> just because I can't. It's like, and I can't lie either. Whatever is for me is for me, you know. And I want to say something about the separation. One of the things that I realized was that both of our parents, my stepmom, your mom, <clears throat> and our dad, had this point of view that. I was going to have a problem with you coming into the world. Like I was going to be jealous because I was going to lose or something. And that was never my point of view. My point of view was, oh, I'm so excited to get a sister. Yay. And I'll never forget seeing you for the first time. And I was just like, and I was like, can I hold her? And they're like, yeah, but you have to do this and this and this and make sure not to do this. And I'm like, I don't care. Can I hold her? You know, and they put you in my arms and I was just like, and I just, oh my God, it was like somebody just dropped a little angel in your hands, you know, and I was just like, hi. And it's so interesting because both of our parents are really good at trauma and drama. And they were also really good at trying to create separation between us. And, you know, but we always knew I... what we knew. time when I wouldn't have a cognitive memory, so I was very little. Um, God, you were so cute, by the way. I just got to you were so damn cute. Not much has changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember um, watch, watching that video, and all I could see was 
who you were in regards to me. Like Christmas was going on in the video. Every, there was chaos everywhere. People were opening presents. And you kept going to me to make sure I was okay and wanting to know if I got my presents yet. And wanting to know like if if like if it would be okay if you let me open it or like you were so attentive to me and yet that's not the story that was told. And she sends me this text that just made me cry. I mean, not just tears, cry. Um, and she said, she's like, you know, the story that I was told was that you weren't, I don't know, like you didn't love me or you didn't like you continuously didn't that I didn't want you here. Yeah. And that's the story that she was told. And I was, and like I said, I'm a little angel from day one, from my point of view. She's like, it just blew apart every lie that I had bought that you didn't love me and didn't care for me and didn't want me around. And she's like, I'm so sorry that I've let the separation be there for that long. That acknowledgement just was amazing. It changed something dynamically in my world because I had always looked at how I hadn't been enough for you or been there enough or, or, or been able to contribute to you enough, you know, like I really wanted to. And when I was scared at night, I would run to your room. I don't want to crawl in bed, but they made it so wrong that a little sister would be sleeping with her brother. I know, and, exactly. And, and that's so then I would be told I couldn't do that. And so there's always a space of like, just separation, but there's all, then, there, then on the other side of it, so that's the monkey mind, right? So you're like, but I'm so close and connected to him and I love him so much and I know he loves me and we have, we have something and then then the lies that you bought like yeah. play out and so then there's always this kind of back and forth you know and, and in this reality if a child's nine years old and he's been the only grandchild and he's been uh, the only uh, kid then bringing in a new child would in this reality totally disturb everything so it's true. like you actually couldn't add anything right? yeah exactly like, yeah and which i was i mean i was the only grandchild for nine years i was spoiled by one side of my family and that was exactly their point of view that i couldn't possibly and you know what I just realized? One of the things we talk about in Access is people accuse you of what they themselves are doing. And I just realized that if they were in a similar situation, that's what they would expect somebody to do. So that's what they assumed I was doing and had as my point of view. It's so interesting though, because one of the things I found is when, when something is true, it just is, and you will eventually get to it. Access now, I get to Best do. damn haircuts you've ever, seriously? My hair now? Huh? Uh -huh. Watched me a couple years ago. Not nearly as nice. <laughs> uh -huh. She's like, why don't you do it dry? I'm like, dry? <laughs> Actually, what happened was she has been cutting my hair for several years and off and on when we would see each other and I was always like, do it this way. And she would try to do it that way, except she always knew there was some other way to do it. But I was the one who was like, uh-uh. And then finally, after and interestingly, after she started doing access and made a facilitator, I realized I was doing the same thing to her that so many people had been doing to me, which was try to control the outcome. And I finally, I just, I remember being there in San Francisco with you and she comes over to my hotel. She's like, what do you want? I'm like, you tell me. I'm like, I trust you. You have created more amazingness in people's hair than anybody I've ever seen. You are phenomenal, so go for it. What do you want to do? And then she's like, what about if you kept it more dry rather than the wet, you know? And she's probably been wanting to have this conversation for years, ever since she started cutting hair. And I was like, sounds good, let's do it. Let's give it a try. So I figured if it didn't work, I could always go back to the old thing that I had. Yeah. And I'll tell you, man, sometimes you make one change like that in your friggin' hair. I mean, I'm sure women know this, okay? But guys, <laughs> we don't know this shit, okay? And we don't know that you make one change like that. It just, it's like, it changes everything when it's what's actually right for you or works for you. I was like, so are you willing to choose something different in your styling routine in order to get the results that you want right. so that you can actually create the look that you want? It's because if not, you, ha this, you have this haircut um, and it would be so simple. You just have to choose something different. And um, I walked out of that going, that's awesome. That was so crazy. <laughs> that's so it was cool. so fun. <laughs> Reliving it. Oh no.